the Cyclops and Sirens to the legendary Hydra and Cerberus. Here are 14 of the deadliest monsters from Greek mythology. Welcome to Crypto Fun Fridays. Hey Kevin, thanks for letting us know you like the content. We always appreciate the positive feedback. You know, we find out a lot of interesting things while researching the episode, so it's kind of a win-win all around, right? Well, be sure and tell us what you think of this installment, and cheers. Number 14, Sirens. They were most often portrayed as women who lured sailors to the deaths with their hypnotic voices. A lesser known version of them is found in early Greek art, where they were depicted as birds with a woman's head along with feathers and scaly feet. Other representations portrayed them as various hybrids of birds and women, including sparrows with a woman's face. Later depictions began to portray sirens as exceptionally beautiful women who played harps while sitting on the rocky coast of their island. These dangerous creatures appear in many Greek stories among the most well-known is Homer's Odyssey. Harpies. These creatures were half-human, half-bird spirits that personified storm winds. The general appearance was described as a bird with long claws that had the head of a woman. It sounds a little like the description of the siren. Some sources emphasize the ugliness, even suggesting they were a type of human vulture creature. But in some forms of art, they are depicted as having a beautiful appearance. They functioned as agents of Zeus, and would abduct evildoers, then torture them on the way to Tartarus, the deep abyss that served as a dungeon. Scylla and Charybdis. Now these are two separate creatures, but they're so strongly connected that we're going to feature them in the same segment. Scylla was a monster that lived on one side of a narrow channel of water across from Charybdis. It's described as a sea monster with several heads that feasted on sailors who ventured too close to its domain. Now there is no clear description of the Charybdis, other than it was a massive sea creature capable of generating huge whirlpools that could destroy entire ships. If you tried avoiding one monster, the other one would get you, and vice versa. And because of that, the names have been immortalized in the expression trapped between Scylla and Charybdis. And that refers to a situation where you're trapped between two dangerous circumstances with no apparent way out. But as Homer described in the Odyssey, Odysseus did eventually manage to escape both creatures, but only at the cost of his ship and crew. Impusa. Now here's a creature that might not have the name recognition of some of the others on the list, but Impusa was a beautiful demigoddess who morphs into a creature with flaming hair, sharp teeth, and bat wings. Because she had a proclivity to drink the blood of young men while they slept and devoured the flesh for sustenance, she seems to have a lot in common with vampires. According to some accounts, Impusa had one donkey leg and the other leg was made from brass. Well, certainly no vampire we can think of had all that going on for him. Gorgons. Medusa was the best known of these creatures, generally described as winged human females with living venomous snakes writhing on the heads instead of hair. There were three Gorgons in all, and all three were said to have hideous faces, one look from which was enough to turn the victims to stone. Medusa was defeated by Perseus, who used a mirrored shield to avoid looking directly at her. When he beheaded her, the winged horse Pegasus is said to have sprang from a body. Perseus continued to use Medusa's severed head as a weapon, because even though it was lifeless, it could still turn his enemies to stone. Cyclops. Now the name alone is enough to conjure up the image of the one-eyed primordial giants that were supposedly born of the earth, or Gia. They were known as blacksmiths and builders. When Zeus released them from the pit of Tartarus, they returned the favor by crafting his thunderbolts, in addition to other legendary artifacts like Poseidon's trident. The best known story about the creatures is likely provided in the Odyssey. When the Cyclops Polyphemus trapped Odysseus and his crew, he blocked their escape and devoured crew members daily. After Odysseus encouraged the Cyclops to sample the wine on board the ship, the creature became drunk, allowing the crew to blind Polyphemus and escape. Stymphalian birds. The man-eating birds not only had beaks made of bronze, they had razor-sharp metallic feathers that could be launched at victims. They dwelled within a swamp and were eventually defeated by Hercules during his sixth labor. Because the swamp would not support his weight, Hercules frightened the birds into the air and then shot many of them down with poisoned arrows. The survivors fled and resettled on an island in the present-day Black Sea, where they later encountered the Argonauts. Sphinx 
It was said to have the wings of an eagle, the body of a lion, and the head of a woman. The creature was known for its trait of asking riddles, but if you answered incorrectly, it would devour you alive. It was known to guard the city of Thebes in ancient Greece, but it was eventually bested at its own game. When Oedipus correctly answered its riddle, the Sphinx either devours herself out of frustration or throws herself from a high cliff, depending on the source. Minotaur. This creature is well known for having the body of a human and the head of a bull. Because he was the unnatural result of a human mating with an animal, normal food could not sustain him, so he devoured human flesh to survive. The Minotaur is likely best known for hunting down the victims who were released into the labyrinth as part of an annual sacrificial ceremony. Located on the island of Crete, the labyrinth was the creature's home and he lived in the center of the structure. The Minotaur was eventually defeated by Theseus, who managed to navigate to the center of the maze and kill the beast in a surprise attack. Echidna. Now, if you watch Epic Wildlife enough, you know we've featured a critter called the Echidna. It's a medium-sized mammal native to Australia and New Guinea that resembles a porcupine or hedgehog. But those echidnas were actually named for this echidna, which appears in Greek mythology, and was a creature that was half woman, half snake. Now, while she may not sound so scary on her own, she did play a vital part in producing a few of the scary beasts on this list. So why is it namesake to the animal? Well, because those critters are monotremes, or one of the few mammals that lay eggs, they were viewed as being part mammal, part reptile, not so unlike their mythological counterpart. Chimera. By some accounts, this beast gave birth to the Sphinx, and the creatures do share some similar physical attributes. While the Chimera could breathe fire, it had the head and body of a lion, along with the head of a goat emerging from its back, and a snake for a tail. The creature was feared as an omen for shipwrecks, storms, and various natural disasters. The Chimera was defeated, ironically, by its fiery breath. When the hero Bellerophon struck it in the mouth with a spear tipped in lead, the creature's scorching breath melted the metal and caused it to suffocate and die. Cerberus. This beast is often called the Hound of Hades because it guarded the entrance to the underworld. The three-headed dog's assignment was as much to prevent the dead from leaving the underworld as it was to keep the living out. Because it only had an appetite for living flesh, the spirits of the dead could freely pass into the underworld. But living mortals who ventured too close to the gates were devoured. Along with the three canine noggins, the legendary beast had lion-like claws and snakes protruding from its body, along with a snake for a tail. Cerberus is one of the most famous of all mythological creatures, but he might be best remembered as the twelfth and final labor of Hercules. Hercules defeated the beast with his great strength, then slung it over his shoulder and took it to the mortal world. But according to some accounts, Cerberus managed to escape and eventually return to the underworld. The Hydra. Here's another name on the list with a lot of brand awareness. Its formal name is the Hydra of Lerna, and the serpentine beast has roots in both Greek and Roman mythologies. The earliest documented account of the monster dates to around 700 BC. It was said to live in the Lake of Lerna, which represented the entrance to the underworld. While the Hydra is known to have many heads, an exact number is difficult to pinpoint, and that's because so many sources claim different numbers. Estimates can range anywhere from nine heads to around 50. Now, while the familiar legend goes that the Hydra regrows two heads for every one that is lost, well, those numbers can vary as well, but most accounts are consistent in regard to the beast's poisonous blood and breath. Even its scent was said to be deadly. Now, did you know? that after being killed by Hercules, he used the Hydra's blood to defeat the Stymphalian birds we mentioned earlier. Typhon. With so many sources considering Typhon to be the deadliest creature in Greek mythology, this was an easy choice for number one. This legendary beast was crowned as the father of all monsters, and to say he was massive is an understatement. Standing upright, it's said that his head brushed against the very stars. He was a serpentine being with the lower half of his body comprised of two huge snake coils and dragons erupting from his hands. His shoulders had a hundred snake heads that belched fire and made chaotic noises. With fire flashing from his eyes and his wings large enough to blot out the very sun, it seemed there was only one being who could take him down, and that 
was Zeus. The war between the two created tsunamis and earthquakes that nearly destroyed the planet. But Zeus eventually triumphed and cast Typhon into Tartarus, where he was sealed away forever.